Alicia Smith having some trouble guarded by Miku Ashkova. Three seconds to go on the shot clock. Nia Clouded unaware of the time in a shot clock violation. Great defense from Ohio State. And for Ohio State on Sunday, they beat Northwestern. They ate a team high of 43 rebounds in that game, and they forced 20 turnovers. 43 rebounds, the highest this year by any Big Ten team in a single game as Miku Oshikova has a little trouble. In the corners, Ricky Harris for three. That's off the back of the iron, but a foul's going to stay here. Miku Oshikova was hit hard by Alicia Smith. I think it's great to see the emergence of Ricky Harris over the course of this season, averaging 6.5 points per game, as we said, had 15 points, a career, a career high in that Illinois game in that Ohio State victory here at home about a week ago. Getting the start tonight, and I'm excited to see what she's able to do in her second start. J.C. Shellen directing some traffic. She's also averaging 18 points. She finds Mike Sell, the dangerous three-point shooter, and she starts off hot, a deep three for Ohio State to take a 5-2 lead. Mike Sale had a career high 32 points in that Illinois game, and she can make those deep threes. And a nice shot from Dee Dee Hegman for three to tie up the game. In this Michigan State offense, they won't go away, coached by Susie Merchant, 304 and 164 all time at Michigan State in her 15th season, just past the 300 win mark this season. As Mike Sell drives a little too hard off the bat, off the glass, and a nice rebound from Tamara Farquhar. But anyways, Michigan State averaging 75.4 points a game, fifth in the Big Ten. So this is a dangerous offensive team, Zachary. It definitely is. It's a team that Ohio State, I mean, Cloudin, she can score a ton of points, but it's not just her who's a lethal scoring threat. Ricky Harris with the block on Farquhar as Ohio State pushes it up. J.C. Sheldon, the extra pass from Mike Seldon. Miller for three. Left wing is good. Ohio State, eight to five. And a little press coming out for Ohio State. We've seen that in multiple games. Coach Kevin McGuff for Ohio State in his ninth season, 182 and 88. And we've seen this press come before, Zachary. What do you like about Ohio State's press, and how can Michigan State possibly break it? Well, Ohio State, they just do a great job forcing the other team to turn the ball over. We've seen some games where teams really struggle throughout the whole game just to break the press. Michigan State, it looks like they might be able to have a little bit of an easier time than some of these other teams, but it's definitely a weapon for the Buckeyes. That's a big foul. Michigan State loses Alizia Smith to her second foul. She's averaging seven points and four rebounds a game. A transfer from Penn State, a grad forward from Lansing, Michigan, to be specific. She's going to sit down now with two fouls. Rebecca Mikulashkova calls for the ball in fouling is Tyer Parks, who checks into the game, averaging 8.6 rebounds a game. Her career high came earlier this year against Purdue, 16 points. So this junior forward coming in for Alicia Smith, it's still a good substitution for Michigan as J.C. Shell hits from the short corner. And I like the idea there from Parks. I don't think she agreed with the foul call, which led to an Ohio State double, but that was the right idea to try to take one away with the steal from Ohio State's offense. Cloudon directing traffic finds Hageman in the corners. Matilda Eck for three, and Michigan State, just like that, through three-point shooting, has helped them out so far. Off-ball pick from Miku Lashkova for Ricky Harris. J.C. Sheldon in the corner. Some good passing from Ohio State. Miku Lashikova, the left wing. Everyone is hitting it now. That's... Ricky Harris, nice deal to press for Ohio State. Continues to shine as we've seen all year. J.C. Sheldon pulls it out, relaxing with 24 on the shot clock. Ricky Harris driving with her right hand. A nice take off the backboard, but that's no good. And coming down is Tiger Parks. And Matt Mikulashikova has made three. was already the fifth three-point field goal of the game. Good defense from Taylor Mike Sell. Deep three up top, Hageman. That's a little long, but finding the offensive rebound is Farquhar. Eck easy right past Mikulashikova in Michigan State. Now down by three. Count is 1-2. Six nothing still in the top of the six with one out. Lexi Hanley pitching to Brooke Benson. The pitch is high, giving a 2-2 count. Now, 2-2 two two right here, if you're Hanley, you just, you can't 
if, if you're Ohio State, this is a situation where you do not want to get anybody else on base because of who is set, supposed to come up. Cracks one, deep center field. Benson, that's out of here. Indiana finally gets on the board. Brooke Benson left center. And the Hoosiers now down five runs. She steps on home plate and Brooke Benson, her first of the day. Benson on the year. Not too bad for the Hoosiers. And Indiana now down six to one. Hey, six to one is a start. Six to one is a start. And if Indiana can keep this going, they if if Indiana can if Indiana can make this a three run ball game headed into the bottom of the sixth, I think Indiana has a shot to tie this game up in the top half of the seventh. Now up is Brittany Ford, the senior. The lefty utility player looks like Lexi Hanley no longer can get that shutout, but possibly a complete game for Ohio State still. I mean, she is still pitched pretty amazing, and she's near. She's over 100 pitches now, so she is starting to get a little bit tired, but she still has a lot of velocity on her ball, and she's still attacking the zone, which is something that I really like. Hanley way inside and on the ground, so now it's 2-1 count with one out. Brooke Benson, a nice shot earlier for her. And Brooke Benson, that was her third home run of the year. With the pitch, another strike into center field. Right center, that's gone. Brittany Ford, back-to-back -back home runs for the Hoosiers now. Buckeyes had them earlier, the Hoosiers answer right back. And we have ourselves a ball game. Six to two, the Hoosiers are crawling their way back. And it's like I said, Matt, we are going through a, like the toughest part of the Hoosier lineup right here. The Hoosiers are 16 and six for a reason. They are a good softball team. They're not gonna quit. They're not gonna just roll over. You're gonna have to keep coming at them with the best stuff that you have. Lexi Hanley has already thrown 105 pitches in this game and granted, she has been fantastic so far, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, back-to-back -back home runs doesn't necessarily mean that you deserve to be pulled, but it does mean that you have to calm down. And that's really all Ohio State is kind of really doing right here. We do see some action in Ohio State's bullpen right now. Ohio State has a right-hander up in relief we can't see who that is from up here but Hanley Hanley may be done relatively soon after this she struggled to get out of this inning after starting out getting the first quick out but since she has given up back-to-back -back home runs looks like that might be Emily Ruck the sophomore right-handed pitcher in the bullpen back-to-back -back home runs for Indiana this inning so now the score is 6-2. We had back-to-back -back home runs for Ohio State earlier today in the first inning. Hoosiers finally answer on offense. Hanley, the 0-1 with the pitch. And the ball is batted back to the backstop. Now it's an 0-2 count, Patrick. And Hanley is, uh, I mean, she's, doing, she's been doing a great job all game of getting ahead of hitters. But after... The, after giving up back-to-back -back hits, that's something that we haven't seen Hanley do this game. We haven't seen her how she reacts to that. And But you know that she wants to come out here and finish this game, so she's going to keep attacking these Indiana Indiana Hoosiers and just, straight, just coming straight at them. 0-2 count. Hanley's pitched 105 pitches today. Sends the pitch. Another foul ball keeps it alive is Lorsung, who's one for one today. She was hit by a pitch in the second, then she had a double in the fourth to elevate the Indiana offense earlier, but they couldn't get any runs in that inning. So now we have Lorsung up again. So Lorsung, out of her 50 at-bats on the year, she only has nine hits. But out of those nine hits, four of those are extra base hits. 
what she does is she hits the ball very, very long. She hits. She's going to hit the big part of the field, and these, these are dangerous hitters. These are dangerous hitters, especially if they can keep hitting the ball because that means you know that they're seeing the ball. The 0-2. Strikeout for Hanley. Her ninth of the day, Lexi Hanley once again gives trouble for Indiana. A swing and miss. Now that brings up Brittany Stone, the freshman who's 0-for-1 today. And Lexi Hanley, just talk about her performance and what she's been able to do to help out this Buckeyes defense. I mean, Back here at the Chrysler Center, 23-23 is the score with 316 remaining in the first half. Ohio State's EJ Liddell, seven points. Ohio State now goes to a 2-3 zone, but right now EJ Liddell's going to shoot two free throws at the line as Musa Diabate was called for his second foul of the game as Liddell was in the act of shooting. Liddell so far one for one in the free throws. As Murphy mentioned earlier, that was the first free throw attempt of the game. Michigan has zero. Now this will be Liddell's second and third. He hits the first. Now Ohio State leads 24-23. Liddell, two for two at the line. He's three for three on the day, and Ohio State's 100%. A press comes out for Ohio State with Cedric Russell and Malachi Branham now guarding Devontae Jones. It looks like this two, three press is Ohio State's gonna stay with. Jones has the ball up top, and now they go to a man-to-man. -man. Ohio State's defense, Eli Brooks, back to Devontae Jones, top of the key. Cedric Russell guards him around the baseline, comes off the hook. That's Eli Brooks, feeds Hunter Dickinson. Under the basket, on the baseline, he connects 25-25. Looked like the Buckeyes went away from the 2-3 there. They wish they had that on that possession. EJ Liddell finds Justin Arns, right wing. Arns so far today, zero points. Same with Malachi Branham. EJ Liddell now top of the key at the free throw line. Looks around. He's struggling to find a teammate. Feeds inside Zed Key. Nice little move right over Eli Brooks. So easy for Zed Keys. Ohio State leads 27-25. 2.20 to go in this first half. The Buckeyes lead. Ohio State 3 for 3 in the last field goals. Michigan 4 or 5. Devontae Jones has the ball. Eli Brooks, corner, throws up the 3 over Branham. Connects. Wolverines get the lead right back 28-27. Great shot there by Brooks with Branham contesting as Michigan's going to have to knock down a lot of threes. And great shot by Brooks. The Wolverines crowd was quiet until now. Russell down the right side finds at the foul line that Zed Key guarded by Hunter Dickinson. EJ Liddell now right wing guarded by Brandon Johns Jr. Liddell in the short corner. He's going around. Brandon Johns Jr. rolls off the right wing right off the basket. Great shot. What a pretty shot Woo. from EJ Liddell. Liddell so far has flashed with nine points, highest score for both sides. 1.30 to go in this half. Ohio State leads 29-28. Back and forth, the lead is gone. Eli Brooks, right wing, finds Brandon Johns Jr. Inside now, Devontae Jones gets the pick on the left side. Right through the little pick. EJ Liddell swats it away for Ohio State. And Brandon in transition. Cedric Russell, left wing, goes down with the little layup after the pump big Ohio State is flowing. EJ Liddell, he gets a block just about every game. That may have been the block of the year right there. As Juwan Howard's out talking to one of the officials, I wonder if you think if you thought it was a goaltender. EJ Liddell, what a ferocious block. Averaging one block, or excuse me, two blocks per game. Liddell, the only player in the country to average this stat line. 19.7 points per game, 7.6 rebounds per game, 3.1 assists per game, and 2.5 blocks per game. What an impressive stat line. He can do it all. He really can. He can shoot it when he needs to. He can drive down low. He plays great defense. He can pass. What does EJ Liddell not do? Some appearances for both sides. Joey Brunk comes in, the graduate senior from Indiana on the other side. That's Kobe Bufkin, the freshman guard from Grand Rapids, Michigan, averaging three points and a rebound per game. Brooks has the ball. One minute remaining in this first half as Ohio State leads 31-28. Inside Houston, Justin Arn slips. It looks like he lost Houston as he was moving around the baseline in an easy find under the basket. Russell brings up the ball. 45 seconds remaining in this half, and the Michigan student section jumps up and down. Kyle Young has the ball, top of the key. 
Arns running around the baseline, comes off a pick. Left wing, pick from Kyle Young. Back to the left wing, Kyle Young is around, finds Bronken side, guarded by Hunter Dickinson. Five seconds to go on the shot clock. Left wing, fades away, the one-handed hook for, Ka for Joey Bronk, and Bronk gets things going for him in Ohio State. A big shot there as they're leading 33-30. It's the first time we've seen Joey Bronk, but in certain situations, he'll have a huge role, especially if, if this game is close. We'll probably sub him in a bunch in the second half, but Bronk won that matchup right there. And in Ohio State, Tom, we're going to stay here on Scarlet Gray Sports Radio, 30 seconds. But Joey Bronk, what a clean shot from him right there. Is he